Brad Hendricks. I'm a trial lawyer here in Little Rock. I uh, have been for 38 years. Uh, I'm a former president of the Arkansas Trial Lawyers Association. I'm the chair of the Arkansas Bar Association Ethics Committee. Uh, and I'm the founder and sole contributor to the Liberty Defense Network, which is a legislative question committee devoted solely to the defeat of issue one. Okay, he's not gonna brag. I'm gonna brag about him a little then. And Mr. Hendricks is very involved in our community. And I read his bio um, that I printed out for you. And um, I understand that you were hit by a drunk driver as a teenager. Correct. And so, you know, just imagine if you, you know, if that would have changed. I think you were told you would not be able to walk again. Uh, not right? normally. Not normally. And so, um, if he had something like issue one, how would that have affected your life? Well, a great deal. Uh, maybe not so much my life, but uh, the, the way it affects our Kansans is by putting these caps on damages, you, you make it where a, a drunk driver is allowed to escape accountability. It's the same with the production of medical devices and other things which, cause, which can cause harm. Uh, if you don't have accountability when people injure other people through negligence, then that behavior continues. And you can see it with things like, you may recall, uh, Lawn dogs, brilliant idea, uh, lawn dogs. Take children out in the yard, have them throw these giant spears. What could go wrong? Well, the way our system is set up is lawyers control that behavior. When corporations run amok for the almighty dollar, it is attorneys who step in and say, oh no, you don't. We're going to take you before a, a tribunal of Arkansas citizens, and we're going to let you answer to them. If you think your behavior is so kosher, then you can tell them about it. And typically, uh, they don't, it doesn't work out for them that well. The legislature in Arkansas wants to control that process because they don't have control over it. And if you think about it, this fight goes way back. It does not just happen here in Arkansas. This fight has been going on since the Revolutionary War, and it's going to be going on long after all of us are gone. There's always going to be the fight between the haves and the have-nots, between the power, the corporations, and the big money, and the people. The judiciary is what represents the people, and it's the attorneys who represent the people. And it will always be that way. And if you water down your rights with the jury system, you're going to water down your rights that you can't protect in other ways. The Seventh Amendment the one amendment in the Bill of Rights, which gives you the opportunity to protect all of your other rights. Don't water it down. Absolutely. Justice Tech. Yes, and thank you so much. Thank um, you for coming. I really appreciate it. You're quite welcome. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for being a part of this campaign to defeat Issue 1. Um, I have served. Um, kind of like my friend Brad, I have been in the legal business over 40 years. Doesn't seem possible. But um, I practiced law for about 10 or 11 years, and I was a defense lawyer. So I, my idea at that time was I wanted to be sure corporations got to fair process as well as regular folks. And that was my job, and I did a good job at it. But I got appointed to the criminal court to take Brad's pled, father's place because he retired. So I served one year as a judge on the criminal bench. Um, very interesting year because I had not practiced criminal law. Uh, but. After that, I went back to my law firm, Wright, Lindsay, and Jennings, and practiced another three years. And, but the time on the bench, really, I found out that that's really where my heart was, to make sure people were heard. And that we used to have a sit. Bottom line is, when you complain, 
you have to pick up the ball. And so I was complaining because judges were not at the courthouse on Friday afternoons. And there's always a fire that happens on Friday afternoon media crisis. Well, so I decided to run for the bench and I had never, I hadn't run, I hadn't run for dog catcher. I hadn't run for any <laughs> student council. I hadn't done any of that. I was kind of a bookworm. And uh, so this was a whole new world for me, but, and I had an opponent who is a very fine person. He's now a judge named Van Smith. And we had an honorable race. But my whole idea, I served for eight years on what was called at that time the Chancery and Probate Court. So I dealt with people, their, their family issues, their property, the status of their property, their estates once they died. But I also dealt with a lot of constitutional issues, one of which was the school funding issue. And so I wrote the first opinion in a case that you've probably heard of called Lakeview. Um, 